Now, a Scorpio investigation has embroiled the operator of the South African lottery into the digital vibe scandal. The operator, Ituba Holdings, donated 100,000 COVID-19 face masks to health officials and police officers way back in 2020. But the Scorpio investigation suggests that state money may have been used to pay for the masks in the first place, and they were then dropped at the home of the health minister, William Kize, and that Ituba paid an obscure supply through an inflated invoice, some of the profit uh, may have been pocketed by Zweli Mkhize's son, Dedani Mkhize. To discuss, we're joined by Scorpio investigative journalist writing for the Daily Maverick, uh, Peter Louis Myberg. Uh, Peter Louis, thank, thank you for being with us. To, to follow the money um, in this case is uh, pretty complicated. Uh, can you take us uh, step by step, first of all? Yeah, good afternoon, Francis. Yeah, certainly it is a convoluted issue. You know, unfortunately, the, the kind of individuals who become involved in these matters, they do go through considerable lengths to, to cover their tracks and to make these cash flows as complex as possible for the very purpose of throwing us off. But um, you know, nevertheless, we've been able to, to put this cash trail together, this flow of funds. And essentially what happened here was that there was a dual payment for, for these 100,000 masks. So the Department of Health paid digital vibes, which um, your viewers would be well familiar with by now. Um, X amount of money in, in early 2020, there was a, a staggered payment of 8 million rand uh, paid to digital vibes, one of its earlier payments from the DOH. And then digital vibes used some of that money, about 5 million rand to buy these masks um, from, from a supplier called Tammy Taylor. Um, but at the same time, and this is where the, the duplication of the transaction comes in, Ituba then goes and buys the masks, supposedly, from this very obscure entity called Spin Wizards. Um, so there's a dual payment for the masks. It's firstly bought with DOH funds from the actual supplier, but then Ituba, for some reason, you know, effectively reimburses this entity, Spin Wizards. So about six million rands lands in Spin Wizards' account, which, considering the fact that Spin Wizards didn't have to source the mask itself, becomes pure profit in the account of Spin Wizards. And then from that point onwards, as you mentioned in the introduction, you know, certainly the, the cash trail, the, the money trail, shows that uh, most of that money, uh, 5 million rand plus, was then allegedly laundered on or forwarded or channeled to entities controlled by Tahera Mather and Ndum Tetwa, two individuals we previously uh, revealed to have been complicit in the Digital Vibes affair in some of our earlier reporting and then also, crucially, um, bits of that money, you know, at least 300,000 rand, then also gets forwarded to Didanium Kize, who most troublingly at, at that stage is the son of the, the health minister who provided over the, the uh, government's COVID-19 efforts at that point and who played a key role in this mass donation issue. And the masks arriving at the minister's house, uh, you say you have evidence of that? Yeah, so luckily, you know, because of the, the uh, special investigating unit's ongoing probe into this matter, you know, there's some very interesting tidbits and information uh, kind of being filed at the special tribunal as their probe continues. And one of that, you know, snippets being uh, delivery notes, signed delivery notes, and also an affidavit from the um, the minister's uh, housekeeper at that point. This is the, the official... Department of Health ministerial residents um, in, in Pretoria who confirmed that the masks were actually physically, you know, placed or delivered to that address, uh, from which point onwards we assume it was distributed to the Department of Health officials because it doesn't appear that Ituba, the supposed, you know, donator of these masks, ever really took possession, you know, of the masks and actually physically you know, handed it over to the Department of Health. It, it looks like it was stored at the ministerial residence and then and kind of distributed from that point onwards. When Digital Vibes, when the scandal broke, there were alleged payments to um, the former health minister's son, Tam Sang A. Um, but the former health minister, William Kize, said he knew nothing about them. Uh, there was even talk about their poor relationship. Here you have payments to Didani and the masks arriving at the minister's house. Um, how is it looking for, for the former minister in this case? Yeah, no, definitely, um, Francis. You know, I think that the ministers, in my opinion, fingerprints are all over these dealings. You know, it has been from the get-go. You know, we've already, you know, in 2021 last year, 
revealed that some of the digital vibes money at least was used to you know, refurbish or do some minor restorations at a property owned by none other than the, minister, the former minister himself. And so that, that kind of was the first instance where it became very doubtful whether you know, his claims would hold up that they had nothing to do with this affair. And then, of course, you know, in the same breath, all this money flows to not only his son, but also his daughter-in-law and then um, his wife, Dr. Maim Kize, of course, also received some of this money. And you know, what, what really now appears to be a bit of a final nail in the coffin is the fact that once again, there's another transaction, this mass transaction, that really seems to have Minister Mkise in very close proximity to it. You know, it's, it's his property or at least his official residence where these, you know, contention masks, contentious masks were actually delivered. Uh, Minister Mkise presided over or was at the, the uh, handover ceremony at the two bus offices in Santon in, in, in May 2020 when the masks were at least ceremonially um, donated to the Department of Health by, by Tuba. So, you know, it really seems very uh, doubtful uh, whether, whether Minister Mkise can claim any innocence or any distance between himself and what, what transpired around these transactions. It seems to me, sort of in summary, uh, um, uh, Digital Vibes paid for the masks and then Spin Wizards came in and essentially paid Digital Vibes back, but the, the invoice was even bigger. So there was a little bit of profit um, to go around once Ituba had paid that invoice. Now the suggestion is uh, maybe Ituba was being directed as to who to pay, uh, which supplier to use. Tell us exactly what they've said and have they provided any more information since this article? Yeah, I think kind of most worryingly, Francis, is that they they've have been kind of rather tight-lipped or coy when it, when it came to pushing them on exact details. So we have to keep in mind that, you know, what, what's really been, been unearthed in our investigation is the fact that Spin Wizards certainly was no, you know, bona fide or legitimate supplier of masks. You know, it, it really does seem to fit into this money laundering operation that was uh, running um, around the digital vibes affair you know we the red flags are, are, are multiple you know the the entity doesn't have a website it's never advertised its products as a, a mass supplier it doesn't have a um you know a director or a, a telephone number where we can contact them and get details on their products so it, it really becomes kind of doubtful and kind of dubious as to how exactly uh, ituba found this supposed supplier of masks you know and that, that's really kind of left me, you know, I uh, prodded them to provide specifics in terms of, you know, how, how did they actually make contact with Spin Wizards? Who was the person who represented Spin Wizards in this mass transaction? And that's where they, they kind of drew the curtain on me and, 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 and became sort of a, a, a rather a space on information, kind of hiding behind the statement that, their dealings with suppliers are confidential, et cetera, and they can't divulge those details. But mm -hmm. it's certainly to me, you know, as someone who's been, you know, studying these kind of dealings for, for quite a couple of years, it seems very doubtful that, um, you know, Ituba had found this mass supplier without it having been kind of somehow directed by some external party to specifically use this very strange and obscure entity to source its mask from. All right, uh, thank you very much. And our team, uh, by the way, is uh, trying to get hold of it to, uh, to give them the right of uh, the reply. Uh, thank you for outlining uh, the digital vibe scandal um, getting deeper and, and Ituba uh, seemingly with questions to answer there. Scorpio investigative journalist writing for the Daily Maverick, uh, Peter Louis Mayberg.